Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah from The Automator. And in this video, we're gonna walk you through how to simply share your changes back to a Git repository. Now, before we go into this, I have a question for you. I want you to type into the chat here. How do you typically, if you get some code from someone else, how do you give it back to them if you make some edits, right? I'd love to hear about it and go ahead and write it below here. We're, we're waiting, we're waiting. <laughs> Uh, but stick around to the end because we're going to show you just how simple it is on Git. If you've ever, I've done this so many times where I'll go and borrow and clone, but I don't push back, you know, offer up my changes. And so as Ace is going to walk us through just how easy this is. Right. So basically, uh, and just to kind of like go a little bit further in what you said, many times when you're in the forums, you might see somebody sharing a library or something and you download the library or and usually they they post that it is in a github repository uh, so so you just go there download the file and, but later on you change some things fix something maybe and then you you just stay with the changes to yourself now how would you do that in real life on you know i just want to offer some changes and it's really easy by the way and i'm just sharing my screen now and i mean github for example and as you can see, I usually follow some of the guys in in um, in from the forums, and I take a look at their codes. And in some of them, I just send or, or offer some code. Mm -hmm. Now, just for this example, uh, yeah. let's just go ahead and look for you, Joe. <laughs> I noticed that you have a repository. Uh, yeah, and, <laughs> like you don't you don't use it, but but it is there, right? All of our stuff is under your repository, right? Yes, so that is right. Stuff. That is right. Now here, if I find one of the of the repositories that I really liked or whatever, so LV table or whatever, I can just click on it, right? And there is a hidden function, and this one is says XCLS, so that's not what we want. We look for an auto hotkey. This is an auto hotkey file, right? So I want to. Uh, I, I used your code, so I went to here and downloaded it and used it, and then later on made some changes, but I want to let you know of the changes. So what could I do? Uh, there's a hidden feature in GitHub. First of all, of course, you have to have a GitHub account because GitHub is gonna create a clone of the project for you to make the changes to, because I cannot change your code, right? So here, there's a hidden feature, which is that if you press your dot, key in this page where you're in the code page, if you're here, and you hit the dot or the period in your keyboard, it actually creates an environment. It is kind of like a web editor. It is VS Code on the web, but it is VS Code on the web opened with this particular repository. So it, it, it is amazing. It's great because you can definitely just edit the files right here. But for you to be able to make changes, and actually it looks like it's still loading, I don't know why. Let me double check. For some reason it didn't open, let me try it again. Looks like it's at least trying now. Yeah, so here it is. Now, uh, this is the file. You get some get started things. It doesn't really matter, but you just click on the file and now you have the whole uh, script here to work with. It says auto hotkey version two, but probably it's auto hotkey version one. For some reason it is associated with that, but it doesn't matter. So let's say that I want to make some changes to this. Let's just add a comment that says this uh, file is awesome, whatever it is. So I just saved that, and that's the change that I did. Now, when you go- Wait, 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 wait. you said save. How did you save? Control S. Okay, all right. Yeah. And I it, forgot it, we're in the editor now. Okay. Yeah, it is, an, it is a normal editor. So right now you can use Control S or Control Shift S. It, it, it will work as if it was an editor right now. Now, the only thing is that VS Code has Git integrations, right? And the the, the pull request that we're going to create for you is created with Git. So that the saving does a commit. Am I right there? No, not yet. And that's the thing. So that's the second step. Saving the file doesn't create any commits or anything. So saving the file. Your environment. Anyway, okay. No, no. But in general, right now, just in, in VS Code and any editor, whenever you save a file, Git is independent of that. You can save the file as many times as you want. 
without creating commits. And that's what I'm going to do right now. What I'm going to do is now on the left, click on the source control tab, which is the one that makes track of the changes. And when I click on that file, it tells me what changed. So again, I could type a lot of things, hit save, but I haven't saved anything yet. Well, I haven't committed anything yet. When I go here, now I can see the changes. And in this case, there's only one change. What's the change? One line got added. Anything else? Everything else is normal. So now that I have the changes, I have to click Add to stage them. The reason for this is that you can stage parts of the file. You can commit just one part of it, not the whole thing, if you want to. If you have many changes, like for example, doing it independently, yeah, right. right. You you can you can create different commits. So this is another thing. So now I have two changes. I could definitely just decide, okay, I want just this one, okay? So this actually creates something that I, I can do it. In my version, I have a hotkey for it, but here I don't know what the hotkey is, but I could definitely just add that one change, not everything. Now, if I click on the plus, it would add all the changes at once. That's what happens. So now that I added it, I create a message for it, whatever it is. I added some comments. And now when I hit here is when it's committed to the Git repository. Now, it says commit and push, but this is not my repository. This is yours. So Git is going to say, like, you cannot write to that. And it was going to tell me, hey, you're you're trying to make changes to a project that you don't have right access to. So then it is going to create a copy of the project. I, I name my commit, whatever I want to name it, doesn't matter. I just hit enter and it just switches to my fork. So now it is going to my version of it. Now notice that here at the top, it says Raptor X. Previously it was saying Joe Glines, right? But now it's in my end. Okay, see that's where right. I didn't right, right. So now I'm in my end of the of the uh, of the thing. So let me refresh the page. For some reason, it has issues loading this thing. But in the end, uh, so here we are. We are here. Everything is done. And if I go to my source control, all my changes have been applied already. So I finished. Just as soon as it created the clone, it applied all my changes. It did everything. Now I can just click here and go back to my repository. When I do that, you will notice that when I go to the code, it tells me that this was, cre it, it, you created something, right? I created something and saved it. And it tells me if I can create, if I want to compare and create a pull request. So now that I do that, Notice that here it says Joe Glines on one side is comparing it to Raptor X and he's saying like, yeah, these branches can be merged. I just can leave you a comment. Hey, I did this uh, because X or Y, whatever. And I create a pull request. As soon as I do that, something happened on Joe Glines repository. And this is your repository. Here's the code. And here on the right side, a pull request was created for you. And you can click on it and you will see what changed. You can review let's, what let's, changed. Let's so let's let's go ahead and do it on your end so you can see what happened, right? I'm on Clipshare. Right. Uh, and then I see one pull, one request under. Right, exactly. So uh, my request is there. Um, you will see a list of them here, but you can, in this case, it's just one, so you can click on it. Okay. And now you will see uh, my message because this is basically usually for conversation. Doesn't mean that your thing has to be cool. It's not in the code. It's no, it's not in the code. Now, now this is just conversation that we can have regarding this. Oh no, you can change this. You have to do that. And if you are curious about what is going to change, you can click here. So it tells you what changed and which lines. In this case, you have it set up in a way that on, it, it is showing it in one side. It's not, it's not uh, showing two, like I had it side by side. But this is an option that, that, should, be, that should be kind of like, uh, there's an option that you can set that up. 
But as you can see here, a line was removed and two lines were added. That's what it means. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so the split is the one that you're looking for. And now you will see on the left side, the one that was removed and the right side, the ones that were added. If you're happy with that, you can go ahead and check on review the changes. Now, notice that it has a drop down there. I think there are some additional options or whatever, right? You can either comment only, you, you can just say, no, I cannot approve this. Or if you change this, then I will approve it or something like that. Or you can just go ahead and approve it directly. So you can approve it and submit. And as soon as you do that, the changes are merged into the main, um, into the main code. That's it. And after you merged it, so uh, here, here's the option. It says merge the pool request. Oh, so that changes, right. No, no. So that was approved. And this okay. is, and, and, and you confirm the merge here. So the reason for this is that this is for bigger projects in okay. which there are some people that review the code and right. there's some people who merge the code. So there's a few people that take a look at the code and after they approve it, then there's somebody that goes ahead and merged it. Now, in this case, as you can see, now you approve that. Now your version has all my changes right. and anybody else who goes ahead and downloads the library now has the fixes done. So right. as you can tell later on, you can actually just close. Well, I think it is closed. Go up a little bit. Um, if you go to pull requests again, is it still open? No, exactly. So it, it closed it already. It is shown here in the closed section, because after you merge, it gets closed. So again, this thing about pulling requests or doing that is the way how you can share code with one another. Now, Git does all that from the command line. VS Code allows you to streamline that in your editor. And even if you don't have Git or GitHub uh, or VS Code, you can still do it over the web by using this version that doesn't, the only thing that requires you to have is a GitHub account. That's all. Cool. That, that's quite amazing. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And uh, in general, for other people, if they have a library and you saw an error that is easily fixable and you know how to do it, instead of just going to the forums and saying, hey, you have an error. Right. If you know what the error is or how to fix it, it, it might be a little bit more beneficial for the whole community to just go ahead, do the fix, send a pull request, and just tell him, hey, I sent a pull request uh, regarding this particular well, issue, and he just has to check on it and add it. But, it. And correct me if I'm wrong, you even, you even get notified, right? You know, yes. you get notified already, so you don't even have to go tell them. No, no, I get an email. I get an email, for example, yeah. yeah. That commenting, you know, allows you to. It's the one thing I didn't like was said message. You know, and I'm like, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, very cool. This I could see how when you're working with 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 especially people you don't know, right? Like this is amazing to allow you to to propose an update and they can choose. Now the other thing is, correct me if I'm wrong here. When we walk through this process, and you click the dot and it ported, uh, well, cloned it for you. Mm -hmm. Once you clone my li whoever's library, right? That's in your Git account, and even if I go delete my stuff, you still you have still it. have it. Yes, that's right. That is right. So it's just another great way of like if you actually keeping are maintaining code. And this is the interesting thing about um, doing this kind of things. For example, there's very old libraries out there. For example, uh, there is this JSON library that was made by Coco Belgica. Sure. I don't know. Everybody has heard about no. that one. Right. Now. That particular code has been forked a lot of times. Even if his code disappears and he's not coding anymore, somebody else might come along and update the code. And I don't know if you want me to show you that I could definitely see which is the latest version very quickly in GitHub. Sure. But yeah, we can show real quickly. Yeah. right. So so and, and and this is done automatically when people do this. So if I go to Coco. Uh, so it was the JSON library or something like that. So this guy, he forked it from Coco Belgica. This is the original code, and it has been forked 77 times. So uh, what happens is that now you can take a look at the insights, and from the forks, you might take a quick look who forked from where, 
And there is a way from the code and commits, you can actually take a look at who's who's creating. So for this guy, I know that he hasn't been coding for a long time. So this, it doesn't matter how much I put it, it's gonna be zero. This this code is not working. But for the for the forks, I remember that you could definitely see which fork is ahead of that one or which one is behind. This one is 68 commits behind the other one. So I could tell which one is the latest fork and which one isn't and so on just by this. And this gets created automatically when you go ahead and do a, a dot in the, in the, it creates a fork and it gets listed out here. So again, it's just like part of what Git and GitHub is, is really awesome what you can do with it. And it is for sharing code and comparing code and telling you here are my changes. That's what it is all about. Yeah. And so in this video, we showed how easily you can do this. However, if you're at all interested in this, uh, go check out the VS Code webinar we did and a couple other tutorials that you've done as is with other people. Um, showing the Git integration with VS Code, it's it's phenomenal, right? You don't have to do any of the stuff you're showing here, right? No, it's, no, actually, it's <laughs> all the stuff. It's it's insane what's available. Uh, right, up. that is right. Um, remember, oh, please like the video if you helped for this learned. If you learned anything from this, we appreciate it because it helps more people end up watching the video. There you go. Thank you.